Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Now PaintShot Pro provides some templates to make it easy for you to build photo collages or calendars or cards. You usually have to pay for them. They're like one to two dollars or maybe even upwards of five or if you get bundles it'll be even more. They're fairly simple to do. So what I want to do is show you how to recreate the same effect so that you can either produce one that's already available, but you can do it on your own, or if you want to be able to make a shape or cutout that is custom to what you actually care about. As part of this tutorial, we're going to try to replicate this Valentine type template. So let's get to it. So if you were to look at some of the example templates that they actually provide, um, there are some that are free, um, you just got to browse through it to find the ones. But if you were to open one of those, what you'll notice is that the way they approach it is they have a series of masked off sections. But at the top, on this first layer up here, they have the border, which in this case is all white and has all the regions that won't have the photos. In the approach that I'm going to show, we're going to kind of simplify that and not have to cut out the top layer, but just more like laying on cut out sets of images rather than trying to show images through a cut out region of a top. So then we're going to start out with a base image on the bottom and just lay the different segments on top of it using masks. So to start off this approach, I'm going to use this image, the stock photo image of a bed of roses and it's a little intense so I'm just going to bring the saturation down just a little bit. Next, I'm going to create new vector layers to draw the regions that I want to mask out for the individual photos. And you'll see that we want to put each section, each object or shape that's going to be a cutout for one of our photos on a different vector layer. So to start off, I'm going to use a heart vector object. This one will take up a majority of the space. Now on a new vector layer, we're going to draw a rectangle and we'll be reshaping this in a little bit. Then on a new vector layer, the final rectangle. Now let's take some time to reshape these vector graphics by converting them to paths and using the pen tool to add nodes and manipulate them. I have another tutorial where I go into detail on how to draw with vector graphics. Go ahead and take a look at that one if you want to learn about the process that I'm using here to reshape these rectangles into these nice curves. All right, so now we have our basic shapes and which are going to be our cutouts for the images. So now since we can't take an image or a layer actually in this case and convert it into a mask, what we have to do is first export each layer as a separate image so that we can reference it as we create our mask layers. So one at a time, we're going to hide everything else. Then with the pan tool, right click, say copy merged, and then in open space do paste as new image. So now we have image one. So now we'll hide that one, add the next one, same thing, copy merged, paste as a new image. Now we have image two, and finally, We'll turn on the last layer, copy merged, paste as new image. So now we have images one, two, and three along with our starting image. And now we can create our mask layers for each one of these. So now that we don't need to make any more adjustments to our vector objects, let's convert all of them to raster. So now to create our mask layers for each one of these objects, we can select that layer, go to mask and say from image, select the image that correlates with that particular layer. And since the opacity is the best attribute at this point to be able to identify what we want showing and what we want hidden, we can choose source opacity and hit OK. And what that does is now we have a mask that mapped perfectly with the region of where we want our cutout to be. So now we can do that for the next two layers.
So now we have three mask layers sitting on top of our background image. And now we can start dragging our images that we want to fill into these spaces onto our project. So for this first one on the left, I have a picture of some candy that I'm dragging in. And then we can simply resize it to fit it within that mask. But what you'll notice is the view, as the mask should do, is restricted to just the region that we created with our vector graphic shape. Now that we've done the first image, let's grab the next one, resize it as necessary. Finally, we'll grab the last image. Okay, so now we have all of our images arranged into our masked regions. If we want it to blend a little bit better, we can do a little bit of adjusting. The overall tone of the images underneath the background is sort of like a muted pinkish sort of Valentine's Day coloring. So for the candy, I think I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit. And then for the couple in the heart, I'd like to actually give it sort of a light pink hue just to, just to kind of make it match the rest of the other images. So to do that, I can add another layer and fill with a pinkish kind of color, something that matches it, the rest of the images, and then change that blend layer to soft light. There we go. So the next thing that we need to do to finalize the image and have it match the original example is we need to add another background um, that's a darker gray and then add a drop shadow from the rose petal background onto it. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is promote the background so that it's sort of a floating layer. And then add another layer. A new raster layer would be fine and drag that underneath. And now with that roster layer selected, we can go to image, canvas size. And what we can do in this view is we can adjust the width and height so that um, it adds that border around the image. And by adjusting that, we can see by placing our object in the middle, it'll add the equal amounts on all the different sides to create the increase canvas. 50 and 80 will work fine for this particular example. And what we'll see is now the whole entire canvas has been increased, but the layers have been preserved. If you tried to do add border, add border is going to squish everything into one layer and you wouldn't be able to do the drop shadow. So now that we have this new bottom layer, what we can do is use the fill tool. Pick like a dark gray. something about there and we can fill the bottom so now we have that and the last little bit which is a very fine detail but it's still a detail that's in the original image is to add sort of that drop shadow and we can do that very simply by just going to the flower layer and then clicking on layer styles and now in layer styles we'll want to turn on drop shadow but with drop shadows, what I found in this particular example is to use 0.05 for both of the X and the Y. And if we zoom in in here, it's really, it's really subtle, but you can see that that shadow is there. And that's it. And you might say, well, the amount of time and effort that it took to create this uh, is worth just paying $2 and being able to drop the images in and have, you know, a final product. I would say that's an absolutely fair statement. And if it seems worth it to you, go and do that. Um, where this probably adds more value is if you have a set of cutouts or a design that just isn't represented in the template library, or you just have to, you just couldn't find what you were looking for. But to summarize, basically really what's all involved is getting your set of images, 
creating your cutouts, whether by some type of reference image or in my case, using vector graphics to create these very specific kinds of clean shapes, creating mask layers for each one of those shapes. But in doing so, you have to create a copy image because you can only create a mask from an existing image, not a layer. Then dragging your images into each of the separate mask layers and adjusting them to have them all blend if necessary. And then in this case, just making final adjustments, adding a frame or adding a drop shadow or anything like that just to bring the, all the image together. So that's it. As you can see, Pretty Simple is a great practice for using masks. Like I said earlier, feel free to browse the templates that are already available. Um, they may be all you need, but if you want to do something specific, go ahead and do this approach. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you have any suggestions for topics you would like covered, go ahead and leave a comment for that as well. Otherwise, go ahead and click subscribe if you like updates, and I'll see you guys next time.